Welcome to Supervisor Series, a place where we go beyond the initial configuration and show you real end-to-end -end use cases to fully unlock the potential of your supervisor cluster. In this first episode, we'll quickly show you how you can enable workload management to transform your vSphere cluster into a supervisor cluster. To get started, open workload management in vSphere client. We have already completed all of the prerequisites such as enabling HA and DRS on our cluster. We have configured the storage policy and we use NSX for this setup. We have also assigned an appropriate license. Since its first introduction, the enablement process has been significantly simplified and can now be completed in just few steps. First, we're going to select NSX as our networking stack. We select cluster deployment to deploy supervisor into a single vSphere zone. As the cluster is already added to vSphere zone zone 1, this information will be automatically populated. Next, we select the storage policy, which will define data source that can be used based on tags. In management network, we will select static mode and select the management port group. This is a network that control plane VMs will be deployed on and used to communicate to vCenter. Notice we are only defining the starting IP. Five IP addresses are needed for the Kubernetes control plane, one for each of the three nodes, one for virtual IP, and one for rolling cluster upgrades. We will enter remaining configuration details, such as subnet mask, gateway, DNS, and NTP, and move on. Now let's look at the workload network, which supports traffic to the Kubernetes API and to workloads and services. Here we'll select the distributed switch, edge cluster, tier zero gateway, and ciders for our namespace, service, and ingress and egress networks. Finally, we will select the desired size for the control plane. For our demo, we'll just select tiny. We'll click on finish and wait for our supervisor configuration to complete. One of the new features added in vSphere 8 is the ability to view configuration status for both control plane and host configuration. This gives you an option to see exactly which configuration steps are being performed, as well as time reference to the last condition change. Once both config statuses are shown as running, we can start using our supervisor. The control plane node IP is the IP address we will use for connection. In this episode, we have completed the first step on our journey. We enable the supervisor. Stay with us for more episodes to learn how to use supervisor services, VM service, Tanzu Kubernetes grid, and more. We'll see you in next episode very soon.